Today I'm gonna to show you how to create this effect from a recent reel that I made using one of Motion Array's newest plugins. All of this inside After Effects. In case you didn't know, Motion Array has an array of plugins to streamline your creative process and just make your work look better. They're all super easy to use and each one actually has a little tutorial built right into the Motion Array plugin hub. My name is Phil and you may know me from some other social media platforms. My handle is thepacman82. This is my first time on YouTube doing a longer form tutorial. Some of my favorite tutorials are the ones that don't waste a lot of time in the intro. So I know that there's a lot to get into, so let's dive in. First, let's talk quickly about the inspiration behind this edit. I recently saw a post on Instagram kind of recapping uh, some moments from Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. Bebop. Bebop? You know, to be honest, I haven't seen it, um, so I couldn't even tell you whether it's good or not, but the visuals that I have seen in it are really inspiring. The way that they use this line, it has so much personality. It's almost like a character within the show, and I thought it would lend itself really well to kind of a short form content. So I wanna show you how I kind of incorporated that into my last reel. All right, let's jump into After Effects and open a new composition. Let's place our footage in there and I'm gonna rotate the footage 90 degrees because I shoot vertically, mainly for social media. And let's take a look at the first clip here. Uh, you can see I'm entering the frame, doing a little air kick and I'm kind of uh, reacting to my left here and I'm reacting next to my right. Uh, I had everything planned out ahead of time so that I knew what I was doing. So for the second clip, I chose to shoot this on a green screen from which uh, you'll see why in a minute. Let's create a garbage mat around the area that we wanna key out. Now let's add the key light effect and we're gonna change this from final result to intermediate result. And then we're gonna use our eyedropper tool to select a color region. We're gonna add some more contrast to our key through the clip black and clip white. All right, in the effects and presets, we're gonna add the advanced spill suppressor. Let's change that from standard to ultra. And I also like to add a refined hard matte effect to my footage. The feather and the contrast, shift edge, reduce chatter. Uh, let's take that all down to zero and leave just the decontamination checked. So there's two areas that didn't pick up very well in the, the keying. My hat here is kind of leaving the bounds of the green screen. This area on the foot isn't quite keying right. A lot of times I will just throw a quick roto brush over top of it. Uh, in this case, I just rotor brushed my whole self and just put it over top because I'm gonna end up using that later. I always like to kind of shoot on a green screen when possible and then just use the rotor brush as little cover ups here and there. All right, so we're gonna bring the rotor brush back into our comp and you can see that the hat and the foot area are now fixed. All right, now that we're finished that, let's save a frame as a PNG. You know, we wanna get that transparent background and jump on over to Photoshop to use a generative fill. We're gonna say modern office, photorealistic, and see what this gives us. Okay, there's a couple good results here, but I'm not quite happy. So I've gone through and made a, a few more changes to the prompt, and actually the one that worked was just modern room. Well, let's go ahead with this one, and I'm going to quickly clean up myself and remove the background. Let's hop back into After Effects, and we're gonna bring in that background. And now we need to work on getting our shadows back in place around the feet. So you can see the green screen did a pretty good job at capturing the shadows by my feet. What I've been doing is a quick kind of down and dirty method. All I do is just desaturate the green screen and then I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer to get as much contrast as I can out of that shadow. Sometimes I add like a small Gaussian blur to it, set it to multiply and make sure to feather out that mask by my feet. And I can bring down the transparency a bit if it's too dark and you can also add a tint to it if you wanna match the environment a bit more. All right, let's jump back into After Effects into our original footage of the outfit number one and let's add Motion Array's plugin, the split screen masking. Okay, we also 
also want to add this new outfit layer to our comps. So in split screen masking, you have various input layers. So we're going to change the layer from none to outfit two. So you can see now it's created a mask on the outfit number one showing through to the outfit number two comp below it. So we're able to rotate, we're able to change the scale, and we're able to change the position or what it's called the translation. You see you're also able to change the thickness of the rule and the color as well. Now all of these changes happen through the effect itself. So you don't even need that bottom layer uh, visible anymore if you don't want. You know, once you load it into the effect, it's pulling the bottom layer, um, the bottom comp in, and it, all of the changes are now living within that effect itself. So now we're able to have complete control over the keyframe animation, position and direction of the actual cut itself, as well as you know the translation, the scale, rotation of all of the input layers. So what I'm gonna do now, and I'm gonna kind of speed through this, start to keyframe the position of this line as it corresponds to the actual uh, action of myself in the footage. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is control the translation or the position of the first comp there. So as I'm barely down the line, I want the actual position of the footage from outfit one to shift back a little bit, like it's pushing me back. So I wanna keyframe that and add some easy ease. Now comes the part that really sells the technique, but I wanna bring back in the rotoscoped footage and copy that into the comp that we're working on. Now with that in place, I'm gonna realign it. I'm just gonna go through and draw a rough mask over the top portion, so only the top half of my body is kind of busting through this line to give it a bit of play and a bit more depth. Uh, so I wanna kind of scrub through frame by frame, you know, move the mask if I need to. This step is really what helps kind of sell the whole technique in my opinion. Um, you're really able to add some depth with these layers. Okay, now we need to repeat all of those steps to the third outfit, and I'm gonna save you the time. I've already went ahead and done that. That second line still all happening within the same effect. You can see that you can change the number of cuts from one to two. You can actually, you know, create more if you need to, three, four, or five, they come at different angles. Now that might be a lot to digest. That's, um, it's a lot to do for a couple seconds of finished footage, but that's kind of the life of um, someone who does visual effects. It's just a lot of frame by frame work to get, you know, one second of finished results. Bounties this way. Uh, so I'm going to pre-comp this now and draw masks around the left area and the right area. Um, so there's going to be three files, three layers. Um, let's rename them middle, left, and right. We're also gonna go back and grab the original outfit one file um, that we created at the beginning, the one with the clean plate and everything. Um, that needs to be put at the bottom layer because as the characters push through and zoom through, you're left with yourself standing at the end. So let's change the view. So now we have two views. And on the left side, we're just gonna keep that as the top view. All right, so we wanna enable the 3D layer for the right and left because we are gonna keyframe the position through space to make it feel more like it's flying towards the viewer. And once it's kind of left the frame, we can stop that position change. We're gonna duplicate the left and the right layer, um, you know, really as many times as you want. I'm only doing about six times. I felt like that was enough for the effect to take place. And then with each layer, I'm gonna shift the keyframes, nudge them over a little bit, a few frames at a time so that these layers are staggered through time. And I also wanna enable the motion blur to help it feel more natural. Another effect that I found that really helps to kind of sell this was this warp kind of fisheye warp as you're flying through. So let's add the warp effect to this adjustment layer and we're gonna change it to the fisheye warp style. I'm gonna keyframe this bend position to happen so that it's at the largest amount when these are flying past the camera and then it's gonna to return to normal as the camera settles on me. You can also play with the scale a little bit. I'm going to add a transform effect now and I'm gonna scale this to kind of match the same kind of keyframe timing as the fisheye. Um, so I'm gonna scale the footage a bit in and I'm gonna bring it back out as 
the camera settles. So, and don't forget to kind of easy ease all of these keyframes. Easy ease works wonders to help everything feel just a little bit more natural. All right, so the final effect I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one more plugin from Motion Array, their Chromatic Aberration plugin, which in this case, it can help sell the effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe that, the strength and the intensity um, to kind of increase as these layers are flying by the camera. All right, so that should cover the entire workflow for this effect and how I did it. So uh, thanks for watching and here's the final result.